Game of Thrones has finished, has wrapped. We're no longer living in a world where we do not know how Game of Thrones ends. Hi, I'm Matt Noble, joined here by Luca and Riley, and we're here to break down the final episode and the final season of Game of Thrones. But before we do, um, just a shout-out to our new sponsor, um, All Brand. The All Brand cereal So is the disappointing but uh, long-standing cereal that people tell us is meant to be good for us. All brand. Oh there God. we go. Um, in unrelated news, Bran Stark claims the Iron Throne or claims six of the seven kingdoms at the end of uh, the series. He ends Game of Thrones on top. Uh, Riley, what did you think of that? Well, as they said, you know, Bran, he had a great story. A uh, story so great that he was gone for a whole season in the middle and nobody cared. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just find it kind of weird how I feel like Bran is kind of the great thing that unites all Game of Thrones fans. You know, whether you love the last season or you hate the last season, I feel like we can all make fun of Bran, you know, like during the long night when he went into the crows or he's warging or whatever, where did he go? And I thought that was just, you know, kind of a fun thing that was ridiculous. Uh, but the show apparently was not in on the joke, and they apparently take Bran seriously as a character, and so seriously that uh, they, you know, had him win the Game of Thrones. So as that scene was playing out, and you've got Tyrion, the character who used to be so smart and, uh, you know, good at strategizing and all that kind of stuff, these days, people just talk about how good uh, at strategizing and how smart he is. But anyway, he's going on for some reason, even though he's the prisoner, about how there should be, you know, uh, about who should be the next uh, leader of the seven or six kingdoms. And he starts talking about Bran, and I, I couldn't believe it was real. I mean, <laughs> like a... Isaac Kemp said, right, he gave that interview where he said that he himself was reading the script and he thought it was, quote unquote, a joke. Um, now, he's not saying that he didn't agree with uh, the writing or, you know, how they ended up rationalizing it, but he did think that he was getting pranked when he was reading the script and it said that Bran would be ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. So that's that's not a, a great look for the show. Um, yeah, uh, Luca Pylon. <laughs> yeah, well, since this is the series finale, I'll just say it. I absolutely hated this. I hated this twist. I hated the fact that Bran is now on the throne or became the king or whatever. There's been no buildup. You know, as Riley said, his character was actually absent an entire season. I don't think anyone would go back to season one in that first episode or any episode in any uh, season and say, you know what, Bran is going to sit on the throne. Bran is going to rule the six kingdoms. I just think it's a ridiculous twist, and I agree with Riley when I saw it happening. I honestly didn't believe it was actually happening. I, I, for me, it was more of a joke, I have to say. I'm so sorry I couldn't take it seriously. I'm extremely disappointed. I'll start off with what I liked about the twist <laughs> of Bran Stark ending up on top, and it was I liked that in the first episode, it ends with Bran getting pushed out a window. That sort of yeah. sets into motion a lot of the political dynamics, and it sort of comes full circle by that all leading to him sitting on the Iron Throne. I think there's a nice bookend to the series with that, but that is all I like about <laughs> it. I don't think um, the journey that we see Bran on uh, really was satisfying to see him on the throne at the end. I think if we'd had a different middle to the Game of Thrones, uh, if stuff if he'd done different stuff. But my question sort of also is, is Bran the mastermind of Game of Thrones? Like, he obviously uh, had foresight that, that, like, you know, he can uh, go in time and all these sorts of things, and he sort of, like, alluded to, like, why was I... Uh, when... when, when um, they ask, oh, Brad, do you ever want to be king? And he's like, well, why have I been staying around here so long, guys? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like, what, like, did he just know 
that by doing nothing, by letting John tell his sisters the secret about Danny, all these things, that just he'd get the throne at the end and he could just sit there, let all these people uh, like sort of make these big mistakes in the Game of Thrones and he'd just end up on top and he just wanted to be king the whole time. Yeah, I, I mean, it's tricky because I think on the page, yeah, you can interpret it that way. But then when they're actually bringing it to life and they're, you know, directing it a certain way and they're playing it a certain way, it's it's hard to think that the show is trying to go for that. It didn't really seem uh, open to interpretation in that way. I, I had a similar issue with the scene where uh, the new small council has gathered and they're all yeah. talking about kind of petty governance issues. And... On the page again, I, I can see how that would be like a really cynical take on how like you can't break the wheel, you know, no matter who's in power, they're just gonna act the same as everyone does when they're in power. But as the scene was presented in the show, I don't think that was the intention or uh, like a way that they were hoping people would interpret the scene at all. It was just played for laughs. Yeah, exactly. I thought that scene was more funny than it was anything else. I couldn't take it seriously. And honestly, if Bram was going to be the one to, you know, rule over the Seven Kingdoms or Six Kingdoms in this case, then we needed more buildup. We needed a reason why he would want to rule the Seven Kingdoms. I mean, we knew for someone like Daenerys, since the very beginning, we've known that that's what she wants to do. And she's been working towards that. But Bran, I mean, I get his role is important. He was the Three-Eyed Raven after all. And just doesn't make any sense and his last scene where he's like you know what i'm gonna go check where daenerys's dragon is now and then that's the last thing we see of him it to me it was insulting to all the people who've been watching this show for so many years you know the audience is not stupid we, we're gonna ask we're gonna you know after the episode we're gonna talk about things like that and it just infuriated me i have yeah. to say I think it was tricky with Bran, like, uh, I don't really have any sense of how he would rule or what his leadership skills are. Like, I feel like he was very much a passive character in the past yeah. couple of seasons. And uh, I don't know, maybe the point they're making is it doesn't really matter who's king as long as there's a good story behind it. Yeah. And that's what breaks the wheel. I, I didn't particularly buy it. Like, at least with Daenerys... Uh, and she went off the rails the last couple of episodes, but at least yeah, with Daenerys, yeah. I had some sense of what her, like, philosophy was behind ruling. I think Sansa Stark is also someone who I, I feel like, particularly in the last couple of episodes, she's talking about, oh, we need enough stuff to feed the troops. Like, you can see she had a real practical sense of, like, what was good for the people and stuff like that. I think I think in that council meeting, Sansa Stark's looking around as this is plan is being hatched of, like, uh, uh, is this a joke too? I feel like Sansa Stark, and that, like, she's like, what are we talking about? Like, why is Bran going to be king? Which is why she was the one person on the council who, when everyone was voting, was like, uh, look, we're right. We'll, we'll just, you guys can have Bran. Uh, the North, we'll just sort ourselves out. Uh, which, because I think, like, in some sense, like, uh, of anyone, uh, Bre like, a Stark could be sold to the North if Sansa really wanted, like, uh, like, hey, guys, great news. We finally got a Stark in control of the Seven Kingdoms. But I think she she seemed to think it was a bit of a joke, too, and just didn't go with, yeah. the, go with the plan. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, boy. So Bran is king. Uh, so, yeah, somewhat unsatisfying end. Uh, another big story uh, in Game of Thrones. Uh, it's the end of Daenerys uh she she dies she's killed by john um riley what what did we think about uh the end to her character arc uh, it, it was being quite controversial this season where her character's gone how did you find the ending of the mother of dragons well again i i feel like people keep trying to put words into her mouth where they say like you know she's going to kill john and you know she's a murderer and she can't stand when people are potentially contesting her power but and then you know Tyrion tells John that essentially Arya tells John that and John finally meets Daenerys and you know she's just fine she she wants to <laughs> rule together she understands that John has bent the knee there, there seems to be no issues uh, which makes me wonder why there was ever that uh, whole Targaryen storyline I'm not really sure yeah. what it amounted to uh, yeah. They talked a lot about, yeah, there being this potential conflict, but nothing 
came of it. And then when John, you know, stabs Daenerys, I was hoping for a bit more of um, some reflection on her part, um, some kind of considering about, you know, her journey and how she came to this moment. But he pretty much stabs her and that's lights out. So we don't yeah. get to see her process it at all, which is a strange choice for, you know, the female lead of the show who has gone through such a radical transformation in the last couple episodes. So I thought that that was a disservice. And um, on that scene, you know, Drogon, he shows up, he burns the Iron Throne. But I feel like for the past seven seasons, he's shown nothing but loyalty to Daenerys. And he has, I'm not sure, even if Jon could not be burned, I'm not sure why he didn't eat him or retaliate in some fashion. Yeah. I mean, for me, like Cersei's death, like the Night King's death, I was just completely underwhelmed by this by Daenerys' death. You know, she's one of the biggest characters on the show, undoubtedly. She's had a big arc this season, whether we like the arc or not. And for me, her death was just way too fast. You know, he stabbed her and then all of a sudden she was dead. It For a character who's, you know, we've been building up to this moment, to the series finale, where she, potentially Daenerys would sit on the throne and then she's taken out within a matter of, I think, one minute. I just, I was incredibly disappointed. And I have the same thoughts like Riley on Drogon. I mean, I liked the scene with Drogon. I liked how he kind of took her and then flew away. But why did he burn the Iron Throne? Why didn't he burn Jon? It's just too many questions that I have to be satisfied with this. And there's been not enough buildup to this type of death. If you're going to have a death like this, I need buildup. And, you know, in the first 20 minutes, it's, you know, you think Daenerys is, pro maybe Daenerys is going to make it out alive, or maybe she'll be alive till the end of the episode, at least. But then it just went too fast for me. I mean, like last episode, Jamie, you know, he gets stabbed in the stomach and he manages to oh, hobble yeah. around for like another half hour, <laughs> you know, across More various locations. Armor. Whereas, you know, Daenerys, she gets stabbed, done. Done. Yeah, you, you're on great joys, no, Jon Snow when it comes to the uh, murder or the killing That's department, true. I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, Jon Snow. The uh, I guess he, he's now the Queen Slayer, Jon Snow. Um, oh boy. Uh, yeah. I, I Yeah, it's. Uh, I didn't like that scene. I didn't think the writing was particularly good. I didn't really get where the characters were oh, coming man. from. Uh, I don't even know. Like, I didn't even really get Drogon's motivation in that scene with burning the throne. Like, I didn't get that Drogon had such a like uh, uh, such an awareness of the f furniture in King's Landing and what like the the symbolism and things. Uh, but I, look, here's a question: How did how did Jon Snow get the rap for Danny's death? Like, how could it, how could this idiot not get out of this one? They ended up with no no body and no murder weapon. I feel like uh, Jon Snow could have pleaded ignorance. He could have pulled the old I know nothing um, ploy. Oh, God. The guards run in uh, and they go, where's Daenerys? And Jon Snow could have gone, well, uh, guys, I was just looking for her too. You don't know where she is? Just came in here, the throne was melted, and she's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> I don't like what's happened, guys. I think That's Drogon's not... just taken her, like, and burnt the throne for some reason. Like, I feel like um, he didn't really need to take the rap for this. Um, uh, yeah, like, yeah. there really seemed to be very little evidence. And clearly, if anyone was that nearby, uh, they would have heard some of their like you know like it seemed like also very questionable uh daenerys um and the uh yeah i guess daenerys is the one she takes a rap for this uh letting Jon snow meet with uh treasonous Tyrion for a good amount of time and then meeting up with Jon snow 101 straight after without yeah. any security or protection like uh she really i guess guess love blinded her a bit in that situation but uh yeah it seemed to be no guards around so i feel like when they rocked up uh john snow could have pleaded like and they go no that's wrong we know you were just in here with her he goes well if i was just in it with her where's the body it's yeah like 
and like, oh, maybe burn up by the fire. He goes, well, look, I'm not the mother of dragons. I can't ask a dragon to burn. Like, that That was, I don't have anything to light. I don't have any matches. I don't have any, I don't know. I think J- Jon Snow could have really gotten out of this without, uh, uh, without prosecution. Uh, also yeah. weird how then, uh, so then they have Grey Worm, I thought was also a very confusing character in this final episode. Like we've yeah. got him slitting necks of Lannisters at the beginning. Then we've got him keeping Tyrion as a prisoner. Uh, then we've got him allowing Tyrion to choose the king that would decide Tyrion's fate. <laughs> it was just all inconsistent. <laughs> yeah. I also love how Tyrion, I felt was a bit inconsistent too, in how he pitched to the council. He goes, guys, I've got the greatest idea. We need a king with a great story. Bran, you should be king of the Seven Kingdoms. Like, this is going to break the wheel. And everyone's like, yay. Other than Sansa, everyone's like, yay, good idea. We like it. And then Bran's like, I'm going to make you hand of the king, Tyrion. And then Tyrion's like, oh, no, that's a bad idea. I have all the worst ideas. Yeah. (laughs) I've I've made, (laughs) you shouldn't listen to me on anything. After the, like they've just annoyed a Bran King on Tyrion's suggestion, I feel like it was a little bit all over the shop. Also, while we're on Tyrion, do we think um, what's the deal with like Tyrion not making the Ice and Fire book at the end? Like, okay. like. Like, I know it was a joke, like, it was just for laughs, that, like, bit, like, she was like, oh, I, oh, I bet they give me a bad review, and Sam's like, well, and he goes, they give me a good review, and he's like, you're not even in the book, buddy. I, I feel like he was handed, the, like, this was about the story from, like, Robert Baratheon on, right? Like, he was handed the king to, like, three of the kings of, or queens of, West. like, how does he not? Like, I get why like, maybe he gets a better edit in the show than the history of Westeros, but do Hands of Kings not get mentions? Like, in this... And, and in he the kills history? Tywin, and he was accused of killing Joffrey, too, I think. And, yeah. 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 It's, it's, like, it's, it's weird. Like, inconsistent. It's just... It's weird he would make the, uh, the uh, production of Westeros history in Bravos. Mm-hmm. Like... But uh, in their drama, uh, but not make the history of Westeros the giant thick volume <laughs> book. Uh, anyway, and uh, boy, so there's a lot of stuff not to like uh, in this final for fans. And yeah. like, I, are there things we liked about the finale? Are there things that we yeah. think they got right, um, Luca? Well, I actually enjoyed the first twenty minutes. I think it was a great way to show the aftermath of last week's episode whether you know you liked the twist in last week's episode or not i think the way it was shot i think peter dinklage's acting in the first 20 minutes was really good as was amelia clark's acting and i do have to talk about that one shot of Daenerys and then the dragon in the background as the dragon flies away that's one of the best shots i've seen on the show so i think they nailed the atmosphere but except for that, I do have to say I didn't enjoy a single bit of this episode. Everything oh. after Daener- Daenerys's death for me was just absolutely terrible. I on- For me, it was like a dream sequence. I wouldn't have been surprised if someone had woken up and said that that was all a dream. It was so unrealistic, so badly written for me that mm. this, except for the first 20, 30 minutes, I couldn't take it seriously anymore. Was that snow falling in King's Landing in the Good episode? Question. I wasn't Bro, sure if it was. I, I think it's just ashes just blowing okay. everywhere. Yeah. It looks super like snow. It like does, yeah. uh Riley, did you like anything about the final? I did like at the end when John was petting Ghost. And yeah, I like how right. they had to give interviews uh a couple weeks ago where they couldn't mention that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. That's but true. I, yeah. it would be it'd be funny if he didn't and there was like a very unexpected fan like outrage over him not patting him three episodes ago and they're like oh my gosh we've got to do something about this how do we how do we cgi and patting the dog now like in the final because otherwise we'll never hear the end of it oh, <laughs> oh i'm joking okay right yeah what else right uh well i agree with luca that the start of the episode it seemed promising i was taken by something that you said last week i don't know if it was off air where you're saying that you know now that the daenerys twist is done then we can kind of move on and it won't necessarily affect the storytelling going forward. 
Uh, so I was I was pretty hopeful for the start of it, which was kind of slow, but you know, it was a lot of setup. Uh, and then, yeah, what what really tanked it for me was the the brand scene where they decide that he is going to be ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. I, I thought it was a very good acting showcase for the whole ensemble, because you know that's they they had their work cut out for them with that material. Yeah, I think I think the cast uh, did really well. Um, I think yeah. some of the scenes were really nicely shot, and uh, as Lucas said, I think uh, uh, a bit confusing whether it was snowing King's Landing, but uh, but 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 it looked really cool. I think the scene with Daenerys approaching the throne uh, to see her finally in that throne room, getting to see it, what what she has gotten. I, I, I would have liked her character to have a bit more of a what does it cost me moment. I didn't seem like there was much reflection and maybe John killed her before she could get to that point, but it would have been interesting to see her. I guess like for her death, she needed to be so sure of herself, but it would have been nice to see her sort of grapple a bit with what she'd done in the previous episode. Uh, but I think Amelia Clark did great. I, I think, uh, Peter Dinklage uh, did did really well, and I think there were some nice little moments throughout. Some nice sort of, I I, I think uh, some of the you know with Sansa sitting as the Queen of the North, I think that was a nice moment. I think Arya setting sail to uh, explore. Um, that being said, I would have liked Arya to do something more this episode. Like you know, I would have liked her to play a role in how it sort of wrapped up, uh, yeah. but. But that being said, I think I think Davos had a nice moment on the council where he was like, "Guys, we got to stop this fighting." I think like that was a nice sort of uh, showed that he was someone that just at the end of the day wanted peace. Uh, so I think there were some cool things there. I actually like. I don't think, yeah, um, John going back to the Night's Watch. I don't think was the best ending for him, but it sort of came full circle and things. I like. I didn't hate it. Uh, I sort of like that Drogon didn't die, that there's still a dragon yeah. out there in in Westeros. Like, there's there's some sort of, like, sort of... And even if they never see it again, they know there's a dragon out there somewhere. Um, yeah. I thought, I, I, I thought there was some nice moments and sort of... I don't think this was the, uh, like... Uh, maybe it was the worst episode of the series. I'm finding it hard to <laughs> tell that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So... We've got uh, yeah, the, also uh, Brienne putting the thing in a, about Jamie in the book. I thought was uh, like yeah. a nice yeah. moment because that book had been referenced earlier. I think Joffrey was giving Jamie a hard time for his lack of accomplishments in that book. So it's nice to see them come back to that. Uh, although I, I do wonder if Brienne uh, partly did it just so she could make sure it was official that she had been made a knight. Uh, <laughs> Like, oh, oh yes, and then his greatest accomplishment that. was knighting me three episodes. Knighting Brienne of Tarth. Uh it was done the night before the Battle of Winterfell. Uh Winterfell. Uh, yeah. Uh okay. Game of Thrones. Um uh obviously great night for Bran. Uh reasonably good night for Sansa. Uh she gets one of the six, uh, one of the seven kingdoms. She sort of like uh, I don't know if uh, the betting markets that people bought into um, are paying like six sevenths out to Bran and one seventh out to Sansa Betts. Uh, probably not. Uh, but uh, so good night for them. I think they had a strong season, obviously, Bran and Sansa in terms of the game. But who had a strong season in terms of the Emmys? Which of these actors uh, are going to be big Emmy players? uh and 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 what would be their our uh, key episode riley well the biggest question mark for me is sophie turner as sansa because yeah she had a good season in terms of the game but in this episode i was really hoping for more from her uh, especially since she sat the last week out mm -hmm. uh and her arc was relatively satisfying even if mm -hmm. you know i thought it was kind of weird that they all just ignored her while they're talking at bran but she hasn't been nominated for the past seven seasons, so I'm not sure if she can get in now with all the backlash, but I'm not sure who else to slot in. But if she is nominated, like, what episode would she submit? Good. The sec Some people were saying the second episode, but she honestly doesn't have a submission where she has a lot of screen time and really that much to do. 
I think her material is spread out through the six episodes or through the throughout the five that she's actually in. But I don't know. It ha- would have to be the second or the or this one or or I, I can't imagine it being the fourth or first episode and definitely not the long night. Yeah, I think so the second one she has a nice yeah she has a nice long scene with Danny in the second episode. Yeah. Uh, she's got. Uh, I think a few, you, you know, there's the council meetings where she gets quite passionate mm-hmm. and for the, yeah. So I think that's her episode. I think that's a really good point, Riley, that uh, Sophie Turner, uh, such a great actress. She's had such a, I think, a great uh, great journey on the show uh, and really uh, her character developed so much and that gave the actress some great chance. I think it's a real shame she never got an Emmy nomination yeah. uh, yet uh, and she might get one this year, which I, I hope so because I think it'd be deserved. But, yeah, she really... Uh, as great as her arc sort of maybe ended, uh, I was really hoping this final episode, and this might be my biggest disappointment of the final episode actually, was that I think we'd seen a lot of Danny, we'd seen a lot of John, obviously Arya had her great moment in the in in the in the battle for Winterfell. Uh, it would have been really nice if Sophie Turner drove this episode more. And like if yeah. the final was really a great chance for her to have a go in the driver's seat of the Game of Thrones. Um yeah. Uh, especially after, uh, like, either in sort of addressing the Danny situation, or just like once John kills her, her sort of taking the lead a bit more. Um, so I, so that was a bit of a disappointment. And yeah, she didn't, re- she wasn't really given anything super juicy this season. Yeah. Uh, and I think yeah, she was let down a bit by not being given more of a role in sort of dictating. Of being more active in the actual Game of Thrones, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's tricky because I think she's in everybody's predictions, and she has been in everybody's predictions. Yeah, but nobody came out of the second episode saying like, "Oh, that was Sophie Turner's no. Emmy tape," no. or even like that's possibly her Emmy tape. I like, mean, she was talking lost. about Gwendolyn Christie for that one. Yeah, exactly. But it, it is strange how the finale was uh, a bit more brand focused. But they're not submitting Isaac Kemp said right for the Emmys, but they are submitting Sophie Turner, even though neither is nominated. In. Well, Isaac, he, you know, his brand is always the same. He, it's he always has the same facial expression. I can't. I mean, I guess if Game of Thrones goes on this sweep in terms of nominations, then if he were on the ballot, they'd just check him off. But I don't. I don't hear a lot of people to actually, you know, singling him out. Him out. Is there any is there any chance they submit him now and that they yeah. when they sent us the list of people they were submitting, they left him off just to extra like just to throw people as much off the scent as possible, to not tip their hand at all that he would end up king. Yeah. Well, have they ever submitted him? No, but he now is no, he, did, yeah, win, he did yeah, win yeah. the Game of Thrones. Yeah, maybe they did. Maybe they did submit him in the past. I I just wanted to like I know they were very uh, sort of very they would they wouldn't even release episode titles. Yeah, maybe course. they didn't want to release that they were submitting the person mm-hmm. who who became king at the end of the series. Like I can see in someone say going, "Oh, this is really clever." Well, we won't. But, uh, but I don't think I don't think he had the material anyway. To be honest, no. Like even but though he it, ends up as king and did more this episode, it still was just him. He, if any, like just being a bit smug, really was all he did this episode. Like he is part yeah. tree now, right? Like I, I thought he actually denounced <laughs> his Brown Stark name a while ago. Yeah, yeah. I, but if we're talking about supporting actor, I think Peter Dinklage is absolutely locked. I don't think there's any way he's losing this category. He has multiple submissions, or you know, he has many episodes that he could submit. I think Nikolai Coster Waldau is getting in. I think the field is very barren, and he has, I think, two good submissions in um, episodes, or even three in episodes two, mm-hmm. four, and five. Yeah. I think Emilia Clark. I was very skeptical about her chances before the season premiered, and in the first two episodes. But since the fourth episode, I think she's pretty much safe to be nominated in the drama actress category. Kit Harrington finally has a tape with this submission with this episode, mm. which I you know I was starting to worry because he really hasn't had that much material this season, and if he gets nominated, he'll undoubtedly submit this. Mm. And then the supporting actresses is a big question mark because a lot of people want Lena Headey to win, but I mean she has the performance in the bells, but it, for some people, maybe too little. 
And then you have Maisie Williams, who has this big moment in The Long Night, who could pose a huge threat. So I'm really worried about vote splitting in that category. But as Riley already said, I'm curious to see if Sophie Turner gets in. And I'm also curious to see if Kit Harrington gets in, because I'm not too sure yet that he will, because drama actor is strangely competitive. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I think I agree. This is Kit Harrington's episode. In terms of Peter Dinklage, I think the final is also his episode. Yes. Three really big scenes: uh, mm -hmm. throwing the hand of the kingpin down, uh, going to uh, his chat with John, and his pitch to the council. I didn't particularly like how two of those scenes were written, um, but it, I, you know, you know, like I can't imagine that he wouldn't think that that is sort of his showiest, and it is his showiest stuff of the season. Um, I think uh, Maisie Williams, obviously The Long Night is her tape. I think that's fantastic. I think that's as good an episode as any actor has this season on on the series. I That is probably my favourite performance of anyone this season. Uh, I would say Amelia Clark's best episode is probably episode four, I, like, I would say. I know, so, like, I think it's, it's that or the bells. I would yes. say is sort of her choice, um, and uh, Nikolai. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a trickier one. Does he have the death with Cersei, or does he have the one where he knights Brienne, uh, or the one where he sleeps with Brienne, which I think is probably the least interesting of the three. Like I would, yeah. like I'm sort of, uh, I'm not sure. As I try to think as an actor whether his material was better in that, like his range and stuff was better i'd probably go the one where he knights brienne to be honest that was the one that gave me the good feels uh but I agree. Uh, riley what do you think about nikolai and what episode he should submit so i think that's in my mind the biggest sort of question mark yeah i think he probably had uh the most to do in that episode i think that his death in episode five though is the one that really secured him the nomination whereas in the episodes before i was kind of wavering on whether he would end up like sophie turner yeah. yeah, he does have that scene with Tyrion in the tent that episode too, where where he where he dies. So uh, that that is good. What um, um, drama series? Game of Thrones, best drama series. Beginning of the season, it was the um, the big front runner uh, to win this. A lot of people thought it couldn't lose. I think we on the chat were saying it was very unlikely it would lose unless there has been backlash to this season. Yeah. Um, where what is the state of Game of Thrones in the best drama series race? A race it has won the last three times it has competed. I, on you know, the last few weeks I've been saying it's a lock to win drama series, and to a certain extent, I still think it's pretty safe. But I do have my doubts now because the series finale was seriously panned. There are a bunch of people that hated this uh, finale. And I really haven't seen some, bar I've barely seen anyone who's actually liked the finale. Well, Rob, and Rob LaCuria, <laughs> Gold Derby editor, Rob LaCuria, uh, was a big fan of the final. Uh, yeah, so there, right. there have been him and there. I've read some other defenses online yeah. from some respected like publications. Like, okay. Stephen, the that's, what? what, sorry? That's yeah, that's good. The thing is, I never know with the internet whether that is mm. actually a good reflection of the industry. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, because there are people like Stephen King or several other celebrities that have actually said, you know, season eight has been actually pretty good. They've really enjoyed mm. it. And I'm wondering if the industry's more, you know, is like this season or if they hated it like, you know, Twitter does. So yeah. for me, it's and hard to say. And I've also seen some criticisms of this season by respected publications. And there have also been, you know, tweets from people like Jessica Chastain talking about how yeah. women were dealt with. Like, so, yeah, I, I think what you hit on, Luke, is a good point. Like, it is, it's a bit hard to gauge where the industry might be at with this season. Uh, Riley, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, the series finale, I think it does have like 47% or something uh, on the tomato meter, which does mean yeah. that, you know, 47% of critics, which is about half, actually gave it a positive review. So, I mean, there are still plenty of people who enjoyed this final season and even enjoyed the last episode. So, you know, if that, that, could, that could be enough, uh, as we are just now in a plurality voting system where they can't really vote against anything by ranking it seventh or anything like that. 
Uh, earlier in the season, absolutely, I said that you know Game of Thrones was a lock, and there is nothing stopping it. You know, even yeah, yeah, just I, I guess that's uh, at the end of the sentence. But uh, that that was on the assumption that Game of Thrones would be. Um, you know, we, we had seen seven seasons of Game of Thrones, so I thought I knew how good the show could be, how bad it could be, how good it was on average, and I was basing it on that. But what I found with this final season was that it was actually worse than any season had come before it. And even during the series finale, uh, like I, you know, wasn't the biggest fan of the other episodes this season, but even that was, I thought, I, I thought was a significant step lower uh, in terms of quality. So this is something that uh, I did not think was in the realm of possibility in terms of the quality of the show and also the perception of the show, because, you know, it's not just about you know my opinion or it's not about my opinion at all. But there are it, it has been you know proved, I guess, that there are uh, there's a substantial uh, portion of the audience that is dissatisfied with uh, what we've seen over the last several weeks. And it, it is hard to tell whether the industry will uh, be, you know, uh, of the same mindset, or if this might be some kind of like, you know, Green Book, Bohemian Rhapsody situation where the internet piles on and actually has no effect on its awards That's chances true. when it comes to people voting within the industry. But I also remember last year where The Handmaid's Tale, the second season, was very clearly not as well received as the first season, and it was getting increasing backlash as the season went on even into the episodes that were, you know, technically ineligible for the Emmys. Yeah. And we kind of brushed that aside because the industry still gave it all these nominations. And then finally, the backlash caught up to it, and it won pretty much nothing at the uh, main telecast ceremony, or actually won nothing there. And it seemed to lose to a different show in every race. So we talk a lot about whether uh, there's a single strong competitor to Game of Thrones, and how if there is if the field's too divided, then Game of Thrones will be able to rally the base of support that it has. But now I'm starting to wonder if it's just like The Handmaid's Tale and it has no base of support. And it doesn't matter if votes are being split all different ways because maybe Game of Thrones comes, you know, fifth in the series race or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it's interesting. The, the one comparison that I've been thinking the last couple of days, though, with Game of Thrones, and they're, they're slightly different, they're different stories, but. Um, HBO's only other best drama series winner, The Sopranos, had a fairly divisive final. Uh, really more divisive final scene than anything else. But it was divisive. There were people who hated it, people who loved it. Maybe the Game of Thrones final has less love. Uh, it's got maybe appreciation or hate. Uh, but, but, I, uh, but it was still able to win because the uh, Academy loved that show and it had left quite a um, big mark on the television landscape. And I wonder if Game of Thrones could be the same, yeah. where despite how divisive the final season or episode was, uh, it has left a mark and the industry liked the show enough or the Academy liked the show enough. But we'll, we'll yeah, I'm not sure. And, and I, I think the writing and directing categories are going to be the most interesting ones because I... I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the show is snubbed in the writing category because David and Dan have gotten the most backlash throughout the entire season. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was snubbed in writing or didn't win writing. And I'm curious to see how many directing nominations it actually gets. If it gets all three in, you know, that's a signal of strength. If it gets in two, you know, it'll be a bit weaker. And if it only gets in one, which I kind of highly doubt, then that might be a sign for us and maybe a warning the, for the, us prognosticating. The writing category could be an interesting bellwether to look at. And if like uh, Dan and uh, if, if they uh, get nominated for writing, it could be a sign that there are people in the Academy going like, hey, screw you, like internet being so hard on these guys. They made such a good show and you could like the internet loves to complain and uh, we're going to give them a writing nomination to show that, like, they have our support. Like, you know, it could be interesting if they get into the writing yeah. category, a sign that the the Academy... Though that would just be one branch. Like, so not necessarily... That's wouldn't correct. necessarily reflect the the thoughts of the other branches. But that I think that will be interesting. If they get into writing, I'm going to feel a bit better about Game of Thrones' chances in the series race. 
Yes, me too. Matt, you mentioned The Sopranos, and The Sopranos yeah. show that it won directing for its final season, yeah. but the series finale itself by the showrunner was not nominated. And yeah, yeah. I expect we'll see the same thing here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The names are in the ballots too, which might be the, the decisive factor in this case because, but who knows, maybe David and Dan don't have, haven't attracted that much hate in the industry again, as we said, we really don't really know, but it'll sweep uh, the technical categories. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. no doubt in my mind that it will. Sometimes a lot of backlash, um, yeah, sorry, sometimes a lot of backlash can lead to support, like, as well. So, like, yeah. maybe all the criticism and us on here talking about how much, it, like, the things we found frustrating about it. There, there could be some people who read those things and see those things who go, I actually don't think it was that bad. I think it's quite good. I think people lean too hard on these guys. So I'll uh, be interested to see what impact that could have as well. Um, yes. We'll see. We will see. There you go. Um, yeah. 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 Another thing is that last year, you know, it won Best Drama Series without winning, writing, directing, editing, yeah. casting, cinematography. Like, I wouldn't say that it won last year in a landslide. I wouldn't say that it got the majority of the vote. So we already have, you know, all these voters who are uh, not coming from a place of voting for Game of Thrones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a lot of votes yeah. up for grabs, I would say. Yeah. Uh, the I way I see it, I, I think we'll probably see them get a record number of nominations, but not a record number of wins. Yeah. Yes. That being said, also, a lot of um, the shows that would have got votes last year aren't even eligible this year, too. So mm -hmm. we've got Handmaid's Tale sitting out, The Crown sitting out, um, the, the Americans has, has finished. Um, uh, uh, was Stranger Things, yeah, Stranger Things was eligible yeah. last year, wasn't it? So, Stranger West, Things also sitting out, West so World too, yeah. Westworld sitting out. So, yeah, they got all like uh, you know, and if so, Game of Thrones has lost votes, and none of those shows are getting votes. A lot of people are going to be voting for a different show that they voted for last year for best drama series. Oh, god, so, yeah. yeah, so and that that is something in Game of Thrones' corner. There is not that clear alternative. It uh, doesn't mean they're unbeatable, but, um, you know, if if I was one of those other drama series, I'd be thinking about uh, putting in a, a campaign to try to get a, as many nominations as we could, try to position myself against Game of Thrones. So when those nominations come out, somehow I'm the alternate. To game of thrones yeah netflix is probably going to push or should push bodyguard and ozark because i think those are two shows that are in a very good position to unseat game of thrones well you know i still Be think game of thrones is fairly ahead but uh they may be in a position to dethrone uh game of thrones yeah. no pun intended. Be, be funny if netflix just drop a new drama series in the in last the week of may the yeah, they shot the crown <laughs> like that. We're like, uh, you know what? Yeah, let's let's have a crack at this. Surprise. We're actually yeah. more worried about Big Little Lies next year than we are about Game of Thrones. This one now. Let's <laughs> let's see so. how we go. Um, but no, I, I look and whatever whatever we think about the final uh, season, final episode of Game of Thrones, it was a show that had a huge impact on television storytelling. Yes the ambition of 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 the medium uh it really turned a look like this kind of story is something we've only really seen in cinema before with things like lord of the rings and to bring it to television to show that a story is like in some ways people always think oh it needs to be on a big screen but to show that actually there's a real um strength to the medium of television in being able to tell a story over in chapters time. over over a long time over a number of like episodes I think is a huge accomplishment of the show. And there were things this season that did work and there were nice moments and stuff. Like it's very easy for us to come on a web show, sell the things we don't like and criticize it, but it, it is really, uh, and look, whatever we say about it too, uh, it has won um, uh, more Emmys than any other series has won in a single season. Beat my favorite, The West Wing. Uh, it's, it, it, has it won Riley more Emmys than any other drama yet? Or is that, is yeah. that this year? Yeah. yeah, it had. So it's, yeah. it's the biggest Emmy winning drama series of all time and things like that. Uh, and look, yeah. if they win best drama series this year, they will join a very exclusive club of four time best drama series winners, a club that includes, uh, 
Mad Men, my favorite, The West Wing, Hill Street Blues, and L.A. Law. I think that's it, right, Riley? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They're, they're on the precipice of history. Yeah, and I just wanted to give, you know, the entire cast and crew credit, especially the craftspeople. I think they absolutely outdid themselves this, themselves this year. The cinematography, the score, the set design, the, uh, ev- the visual effects, I don't think the show has ever been better in those terms. Mm-hmm. And I think those people deserve a lot of credit. And I think the cast, too, yeah. was incredible this year. I don't think I've liked the cast this much. You know, I like the cast a lot this year more than in previous seasons. And I do think, you know, you need to give those people uh, credit, especially for someone like me who, you know, kind of hated the finale and has expressed that several times. There are a lot of people that deserve credit. And David and Dan still gave me a show that I watched for eight seasons, a show that I was looking forward to every single week, every single year when it took a year off or two years off. And I think that is something that I have to mention. Yeah, uh, this show, this season deserves to win Emmys. Like, no question yeah. about that. Like, uh, whether we think it's best drama series or best writing or best directing, but it deserves to win Emmys. Uh, and, and in my opinion, probably even acting Emmys uh, this season too. Yeah. Uh, Riley, last yeah. thoughts. Uh, well, thanks very much for uh, having us, Matt. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Is that it? That's your last. Okay, great. (laughs) Fantastic. Uh, Well, there we go. Game of Thrones, final season. We will continue to be chatting a lot about Game of Thrones in the lead up to the Emmys, though, at Gold Derby. Uh, You might might hate what we've said about. You might have loved the final. Join Rob LaCuria in our forums. Um, Post uh, post comments on this video. Post uh, Join the Gold Derby uh, forums where you can chat about Game of Thrones. It's Emmy chances. Make your predictions all at golddurby.com. Com. Uh, great to see you. It would be great to see you there. And, uh, yeah, we'll be talking a lot about the Emmys in the lead-up, and Game of Thrones will be a big feature of those discussions. Uh, thanks for watching.